stuff. You were in New York and you hired a press agent? Oh, yes, I hired a press agent because you want to make it count. It's your big starring role on Broadway, what the hell. And she was wonderful. She, but it's like another full-time job, I have to say. Wow, wow, wow. But she used to say to me, Louise, you've got to take some diva courses. <laughs> <laughs> you are Louise effing Petra. You've got to take some diva courses. And I'd say, Judy, no, it's a-okay. I want everyone to be surprised at how easygoing I am and how no problem everything's going to be. She just thought it was amazing. She thought Joe and I were just the most pleasant, easiest people ever to deal with. It was wonderful. Define but, diva. How would you do diva? Oh, I don't know. Like, like what? You know, being difficult, asking for unreasonable things, uh, making life tough for other people for no good reason. It's not just, yeah, it's, I, I have no time for it. Life's too short. Life is too short. And all it is is about making yourself feel important. And, and if you have to do that, then you can't be that important. That's the way I see it. If you need to do that, it's embarrassing, actually. And it's unpleasant. And who needs it? I have no time. Less and less time as I get older. Like, I have zero tolerance for that. How did you figure that out? My mother always said to me, Louise, l'humilité. Always be humble, be humble, be humble. I remember her saying that to me even before I went into this business. She had a thing about that, you know, never show off. Never. Don't ever do that. Everybody is the same. Everybody is the same. And yes, everybody is the same. Don't ever lord anything over anybody. I cannot stand being in a restaurant with somebody who will treat the person serving them as, what, some kind of lowly person? I have been in that situation, and I have apologized for that person to the waiter. I will not sit there and allow that to happen. I will not. What is that? Who the hell do you think you are? You are a human being like everybody else in this room, everybody else in this cast. We're all here. We're all trying to do the same thing. Where did that come from? You're talking about so you're being a social democrat here. You're being... Fine. It's the way I was raised and... But it obviously means something to you beyond yeah. an idea. Hey, you know, maybe it's because when we moved from Montreal to Welland, Ontario, that was a hell of a change <laughs> and, you know, whatever. But I didn't speak English, okay? So I went to a school, it's supposed to be a French school, bilingual high school, but... But all the kids who were French Canadians, well, speaking French was not cool, okay? So they did not speak French socially. So I was a piece of shit. And you know what they used to call me? Quebec. And I mean, I had always been the cool kid in my class. I was always the mouthy one, the one who was always laughing and talking and telling funny stories. And how, how old are you when this is happening? I'm 12. And then I go to high school. And how many Francophones were at that school, or were you the only Francophone? No, we're all Francophones. We're all Francophones? Yes. But they all said, but they all spoke speak English, English because Francophone was, no, you don't do that? So only in the <laughs> classes where you had to speak French, that in English class and sciences and math were in English. The rest was in French, and the announcements were in French, and it was a little, a French seven, grade seven and eight school. Holy, I had no idea that in the world you could be looked upon as a lesser person because of whatever. But because I didn't speak English, I was Quebec. Oh my God. I mean, I had no idea that could be a bad thing. So you grew up in a world where there weren't hierarchies? No, there wasn't Catholic, Protestant, whatever, racial hierarchies, wealth hierarchies. I mean, to me, know. my little childhood was all, we were all the same, I don't know in this little neighborhood in Montreal, just all pretty middle class, sort of. Oh. Yeah. But yeah. you drove an, your father drove an Edsel. My father used to like to get a new car every year, but the year I was born, my mother said, enough of that. <laughs> I save money all year, and then you take that money to buy a new car. Forget it. This is the last, so we had that car for 10 years. 